Hi everyone, welcome to Mathematically Inclined. I am Neha, your math mentor. Let's see what today's video has for us. First, common errors and mistakes along with their remedies. Second, application of inverse trigonometric functions in real life. And third, analysis of the last five years paper for this chapter. So, what are we waiting for? Let's get started. I have divided this segment into five pointers, beginning with the first one. No firm background of trigonometry. This is the most common mistake which is committed by students without revising their class 11th trigonometric functions. They jump straight to doing this chapter. Now it's like stepping on the fourth stair without a firm footing on the first one. What is bound to happen? You would fall. So, what's the remedy? You need to revise all the formulae for trigonometry before you begin with the chapter. For that, if you find it convenient, please stick it around your study area or make a formula sheet handy so that you can use it until the time you haven't actually memorized them. Second, notational error. Now, this is one mistake I see the students making all the time. If I start my class by asking what is sine inverse of x, somebody or the other would definitely give the answer it is the same as 1 by sine x. And the answer is no. Sine inverse x and 1 by sine x are two different functions. It is not a number for which Talking of inverse or saying the reciprocal mean the same thing. Remedy. You know, this mistake could be overcome by actually highlighting the difference between the two functions. 1 by sine x has a graph of cosecant x. And if you compare it with the graph of sine inverse x, they are completely different entities. Also, alternately, you can use... The notation arc sin x, arc cos x, arc tan x, etc. Third, conditions apply. Now you know a certain property, well done. But then it is just like half-baked cake. You're not going to enjoy it until you know the conditions as well. Now while discussing the chapter, we came across a question for instance, where you had to prove tan inverse 1 plus tan inverse 2 plus tan inverse 3 is equal to pi. If you blindly start applying the property for tan inverse x plus tan inverse y without actually checking on the condition that 1 into 2 should be less than 1, then you are in for a conceptual disaster. So what's the remedy for this? Never take these properties in isolation. Always ensure that you are verifying the conditions alone. So, get into a habit of doing that. Mistake number four, stay within the bounds. This means that your final answer always has to be in the principal value branch until and unless specified. So, what's the remedy? Before you begin with any of the questions, please ensure that you remember the principal value branch table Thoroughly. I also discussed the tricks to remember the table in my video 1 that is Introduction to Inverse Trigonometric Functions. I would be leaving a link for the same in the description box below. 5. Cancellation. Well, you come across a situation tan inverse x is equal to tan inverse say 1. Now one of the very common errors that I have seen the students doing is Cancelling out this tan inverse and writing the answer x equal to 1. No, always get in the habit of using your properties. That means you say you take tan on both sides. This implies tan of tan inverse x is equal to tan of tan inverse 1. If you refer to video 2, this happens to be property 2 where now this would give you x is equal to 1. These were the five most common mistakes that we have seen in the chapter. Let's move on to the next segment. 
you dealt with this chapter and thought it has no real life implications? Well, this segment will prove you wrong. First is the fire problem. Please have a look at this slide. I have made the same problem on the board. So if you see this is the building where the second floor window is caught up in flames. This is the fire van which comes for the rescue. Now, you know, it has to be the perfect position at which they should hold the pipe so that this rescue operation can happen quickly. So now for that, there's a certain nearest distance to which they can move close to the building. Let's say this distance is say 25 meters. And let's say from the ground, if you are just ignoring the height of your fire truck, this distance is say 100 meters. So making a trigonometric triangle, let's say this angle is theta, you know tan of theta from here would give us 100 on 25, which is 4. Now if you take tan inverse on both sides, you get theta is tan inverse of 4. Once the fire person knows this angle, they will hold the pipe at a certain position and extinguish the fire immediately. Second, we talk of the hiking problem. Suppose in these vacations, you went with your friends or your family on a hiking trip. Now, let's say this is some point A at which we begin our journey. You're given the directions to say move two kilometers towards your east. You reach a position and then from here, you are asked to move, let's say five kilometers north. And then stop. So this point B becomes your destination. You really want to know how steep was your hike? Please calculate this angle theta. And in order to do that, you would have to once again consider the trigonometric triangle and then take the inverse. Now, analyzing the papers for the last five years, you can see that the weightage for this chapter has been four to six marks. Usually, we have seen either a four marker along with a one marker each or only a four marker or a four marker with a two marker. So, it could be anything. So that's it. This brings us to the end of this video. Hope you understood everything. Feel free to send in your queries at this email ID. So, till then, do not make the mistakes. Go through them once again. And I'll see you with the next chapter. Until then, bye-bye.